Hello everyone, hello and welcome to a video about a bold-faced lie. I mean, the joy of programming, yes, programming is so joyous. I can use that term to describe what I do at my day job. And I've seen programmers who are happy when they're drunk. But this is a game that's sort of in the vein of Colobot, which, if you don't remember it, it's, I don't think I've covered it on the English channel. I did on the Romanian channel about... 15 years ago, it was a game about programming where you programmed robots to explore different planets and collect resources and fight things. You could do them yourself as the astronaut, but it would be like a hundred times quicker to program some robots, an army of robots to do it for you. This, uh, well, at least the demo version does not include uh, exploring planets, though I seem to notice that here there are some... Uh, not necessarily studio type environments like in the first missions. This is a game uh, published by the people at Playway SA, which you may know from this channel as the people who kept sending me uh, games that were about very boring, mundane things that would be interesting to the people who don't do that for a living. And it's uh, developed by a person called Professor Scherer, who is a professor of computer science. And it's a, it's a game that teaches you Python, an actual Python. I think the, the language used in Colobot was a mixture of Java and... Good God, was it Jython? Did, did, did Colobot teach me what I do now at my day job? Oh, good God, now I hate Colobot. Anyway, it teaches you Python to automate machines, robots and drones and more for programming, self-driving vehicles... Cracking passwords, apply machine learning for predictions, automate logistics, use image processing to guide missiles. Okay, this game teaches you surprisingly in-demand programming skills right now that are kind of um, depressingly in demand right now. Gain real-world coding skills to solve bite-sized program challenges. Um, it's presented to you like this when we start a game you're at this computer. You can you can do that. You can press E to go out and you know explore the house or uh, step outside and touch grass or you know look look at the horizon. Look look to that that hill over there and wonder why am I not there enjoying nature, enjoying the beauty of life instead of being here in this glitchy house learning python this glitchy empty house that has no one here but me this game really does speak a lot about the uh, experience of being a programmer you're alone in an empty house and this is fine to you these boxes they probably contain hard drives or something or old computers you've got a printer too Oh, this is all you need to survive as a programmer. I imagine that later on you can uh, spruce up the house. You also have a board here with some stuff you've did, like completing the tutorial, which I can put on the board. But let's get into it uh, itself. So, <laughs> Steam is already open on the, <laughs> the laptop, so let's get into it. Um, the game has scenarios that you can play where you can continue from where you left off. You have fact sheets, which are a sort of a, are sort of, um, you know, uh, they're described as loot boxes that you can find from certain missions, which gives you some information about programming. I'm gonna, let's see. Yeah, let's start with this one. This is when the tutorial got a bit more involved. I very much like that dissolve there. So every mission of the tutorial starts up with this kind of thing. It shows you uh, how functions are recently introduced function. You know, how random functions, the five lines, similar to flip coin, and shows you like quite well. It's it's very explicative. It's very well done in this aspect. See, this this is actually good. This is educational and it works and I like it. You also have certain items like um, the rangefinder, which you do not see here. There is no model for the rangefinder, it's just a laser shooting out of nothing, which is kind of annoying. But this rangefinder is a multi-purpose laser tool that lets you identify both the distance and what it is being aimed at. Like in this case, it's aimed at a box. So we're going to have to use this 
to sort boxes from barrels and put them each in their individual bins. You also have an assistant that... Hello! Uh, how can I earn certificates? Is this plugged into ChatGPT for some reason? By completely various... Oh yeah, uh, certificates. Not sure what that, those are. Oh yeah, those are for bragging rights. I guess they're, they're uh, achievements. But you have perks as well. So let's shut down the assistant. You have perks. You don't have the full set of Python available to you at the beginning. But as you progress, you earn, uh, you know, available perk points, uh, perk points. And you have to use them to unlock stuff like tuples or definition functions or lambda functions or, you know... 10 more lines of code or plus one hertz uh, to your simulation processor because th this is running python inside of the unreal engine i don't think it can get to megahertz level but it's python so it's slow by default you can also unlock more ram because uh, actually memory is a factor and a lot of things are actually factors i mean the it doesn't just matter that you perform the task that you make the program that you know runs the code properly. You can actually probably do it by hand by just switching this conveyor speed positive and negative depending on what's dropped there. But it'll take a long time. So you have to do it by code. And um, it, it saves the code that you attempted previously on your previous run. So this is what I did to run the, game, the uh, code uh, to finish the level previously. And 25 lines. It'll probably, well, most of these are what the, the game itself gave me but essentially you have to first um, well you have to bind the scanner to something so the scanner is but the rangefinder is bound to the scanner or you could um, you could either give it the idea of the uh, the scanner itself or just say first and it'll take the first one it finds since it's the only one it's gonna be that one same goes for the conveyor belt you have to get these to um, you know be bound to a, um, a variable and then you can use all sorts of functions associated to that variable like uh, get the RFID of an element or get the speed set the speed of a conveyor belt and basically we can just run this and see what happens compiling takes so I mean Python is not a quick language that's why you have the fast forward button which uh, it does this and this goes back the other way and this should probably put in a stop there because if the tag is nothing so uh, by accident it doesn't like put a box in there or a barrel in there but it does seem to stop quickly enough though it does take additional time but you are graded on that time so if I finish now yeah I am greeted on that time. So I'm gonna improve this thing. I'm gonna set a stop condition for the conveyor belt if it doesn't detect anything on it. So let's... I'm gonna have to click on this first to fix the tour. Okay. Come on. Okay, got it. Okay, back to this. Okay. Else if... Tag is barrel okay and else if it's well the only other exception if it's if, if it's nothing then you gotta set conv dot set target speed you have auto complete it's actually quite well done i mean as a as an IDE, it's quite good i prefer it to the one i'm using in my day job so let's let's see if it works any faster this time. The maximum speed for the conveyor is five, so I can really put the faster time in there. Yeah, it's faster. I mean, the boxes don't have to go, or the barrels don't have to go all the way to the edge and back. It stops them a lot faster. Now, if the processor that I was running this on, I mean, not my actual CPU, but the in-game processor 
was faster if I had that perk, uh, this could have been completed even faster. No, I don't... I'm gonna have to look at the recording, but I don't think I actually improved the speed at which this was completed at. And memory, oh. <laughs> I think I think I dropped my memory score. Loke, I'm not sure exactly what the loc refers to. It doesn't tell me. But the number of commands sent, yeah, this probably dropped. Mm, okay, let's let's get, get to the, the one that's a bit harder. So this is precision parking. This is outside of the tutorial. I have to get this parked three meters in front of this point within 15 seconds of the simulation starting. Currently, uh, this is my code. There's the small issue that you don't start from a predefined distance. Like, currently I'm starting from 9 meters and 241 millimeters. So if I run it, it's gonna end up at a, at a certain point. But it's not gonna be 3 meters. Now if I reset it, I'm gonna be at 8 meters. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, comp the compilation time for Python is taken into account for your time there. Okay, so I'm gonna have to add another element here, another LF, to tell it that if it's under, uh, let's actually get this, if it's over three meters, 3.5, and actually, what's the stop? I don't actually remember what the breaking ranges for these things, how fast they stop. Uh, the drones have um, two methods of uh, applying thrust to them. You can either apply a constant force or a force that's applied for a um, specific period of time, which is one second. So I can do this. Actually, it's... Let it stop. Okay. Now, oh, for some reason, it isn't letting me do that anymore. Oh yeah, now it's loading. So I can do this. Apply right impulse. Huh. Could I? Maybe I could drift it in. That would be something. So for one second, I think it applies this thrust. It's not very useful to me currently. Let's, let's go back to the... <laughs> re re Reinitialize the... the, the program. Okay, so distance is larger than 3 meters. If it's still larger than 3 meters, then do this. Otherwise, uh, distance is smaller than 3 meters. Uh, let's say 10. And then let's put an else in here. There's a properly some of you are probably seeing a more efficient way to do this with less code. But that requires thinking and thinking and talking at the same time. Not my forte. If it's equal to a 3, then stop. Which... That's not going to work because if it stops on 3, it means it's still got, it's still got inertia. This is going to fail quite badly. I know it will. Let's see if it does anything. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I goofed there a bit. Should have... Can I assign it a negative number? Let's see if I can assign it a negative number. Yes, I can. I mean, the flames are still shooting in the same direction, but at least it's something. Go, go. Come on, drone. Go, 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 go. I think the look is the number of uh, lines of script. Okay, lines of code. No, get back there. 
I, I almost did it. Ah, damn it. Almost did it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's constantly trying to adjust. Okay, I'm gonna put this at 10. Uh, three point. It's, it's, you know, it's, it will get there eventually. Eventually, it will get there. But not a lot. It's getting farther away. But it should be dropping now. Okay, let's <laughs> let's reset and try again. This is fun. This is actually yeah. I can see the joy of programming here. In this particular case. Come on, stand still. <laughs> it's so close, but it's not standing still. Yeah, it shows me exactly what it's doing. It's pushing it forward and back, back, back and forth, back, back and forth. Now, one way to do this would be to get progressively um, <laughs> shorter distances by having more lines of code, but that's just stupid. I'm I'm try I'm doing this in probably the most stupid way possible. So I'm probably gonna try to apply the actual impulses instead. So instead of this, I put this in a comment. Comment. Uh, I I kind of forget what's the uh, comment the entire block for Python. So I'm just gonna do this instead. Okay, uh, if distance is larger than 5, then drone dot apply thruster impulse left, let's say uh, 500, and right as well. Now let's see, I uh, want to see how how it behaves with this one. Oh, that, that was way too much. 500 was way, way, way too much. Okay, stop. Let's do 200 again. I want to get it as close as possible. Oh, that's actually not going to do anything. Get it as close as possible and then inch it all the way. Yeah, it, it applied the impulse twice. Twice per tick, I think. So this isn't going to work. Let's try one. No, let's try 50. Gonna put impulses of 50 until it maybe gets to a certain point. So every third of a second it applies an impulse of 50. And that's. I think maybe I should have downclocked the CPU. <laughs> uh, that would have been fat. That would have been more precise. At three. So it needs to get there, and it has 50 left. 50 and it doesn't do any more impulses. Now, if if the starting position was predefined and not constantly changing, this would have been easy. But it's not. Okay. Now, if this is larger than... Three. Mm. If, it, if it's larger than four... Mm, two? No. Three point... Uh, it's gonna be four. Okay, let's, let's give it a bit of an impulse at four as well. Or equal. Or equal. 
this is a nice thing with trans uh, equal and uh, larger or smaller into its own thing. Let's give it an impulse here, and maybe that'll help. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot the semicolon. Is that a semicolon? Uh, it's, we call it two points, it's two points, but it's a semicolon. Is that half a colon? I don't know. English has weird names for things. Yeah, that didn't work. This is gonna take some, some time to get it right. Uh, comic, I'm out of time. Okay, maybe we should actually read the, uh, okay, apply one time impulse force with the left thruster in kilograms meter per second, but mass is ignored. Wait, what? Uh, the total force applied is equal to colon set thruster for one second. So this is actually less precise than set thruster. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to use set thruster because applied thrust impulse is, uh, is a bit too, uh, imperfect. Get back there. Okay, I know I can solve this. Wait, 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 wait. Let me show more there. Come on. Come on, tooltip. Uh huh. Oh, this is I can turn him on an axis. Okay, so we're gonna have to do some math as well. It kind of just dawned on me that I could probably use the distance and the force as well. I mean, this is just 200 maximum, so it won't come to 2,000 like I said earlier. But if I put in a. Yeah, I could leave that as, as it is. And if it's bigger than 3. Distance. I'm gonna try this. Distance times. Um, 10. So this is applied every frame at 70 to tips. Distance time. Three, maybe. Minus. Let's see if this works. I actually don't think that'll work. Uh, distance times minus two. I'm curious if this is gonna work. Probably not. Probably not. Well, let's see. Let's uh, reset this thing and run it. Nope. Oh okay, yeah, I exploded the indentation again. Run it. I expect it didn't, where? Uh, line 18. Did I indent everything? Oh, not. This is where it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, that, that is where it's supposed to be. Yeah, uh, if there are some indentations left from like, previous incarnations of the, the code, it was, oh yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Duh, that's what I forgot. Let's see if it does anything. Hey, it compiled. It's slowing down, that's a good sign. Slowing down maybe a bit too much. Yeah, I think I, uh... Oh, too much, way too much. It's getting there at least. Well, it's still have to go faster. Yeah, I need to have it caught up somewhere, somewhere, somewhere closer. If distance is larger than 3.5. No, that's too much, 3.05. And 3.05 again. Let's see if this one will do anything proper. It's getting there. It's almost there. Uh, it's slowing down too much. Slowing down way too much. Can I at least get it to stop? Yeah, that's never going to stop because I put in the wrong thing. It's supposed to be 2.95. Yeah. This is why I don't do professional programming with uh, manners. I just do a little water utility where... Everybody can be poisoned by my programming. <laughs> okay, let's, let's try this again. It is too slow, sadly. But maybe at least this time it can actually get to the target. Well, it's a good thing I don't program this, so I'll still have time to get out of the pressure. That's what it'll be a good thing. Come on. Come on. Actually, if it's that or I can probably just put an impulse of something lesser. Like one, maybe. Uh, minus. Minus one. I could probably just apply an impulse. Yeah, I could just apply an impulse if it's equal. It's, it's, it's getting there. It did it. it. I mean, it eventually did it. But it did it. it wow. That, I was expecting this to be worse. It actually did it with surprising little, little code compared to the average. But let's try this again. I, I, I could get it to be more accurate. I could get it to be more accurate. Okay. Uh, if it's equal, if it's equal, why should I say minus one? One. And one, so I can have it slow down times 10 times 15. So I want it to slow down. Uh, I missed something around here. Oh yeah, that double equals. That, that, I actually like that it shows you that. If you surprise how many professional IDs don't. Like stuff that you use to program water pumps that keep people alive. Or sewage pumps that can explode. You'd be shocked. Shocked, I say. And it doesn't stop. Okay, if it equals or if it's smaller. Uh... Actually, it was, uh, 
Yeah, I could probably do this instead. No, uh, smaller or equal. Smaller or equal. Should be this one's bigger. Yeah. Let's try this for the 13th time. Yeah, I think I get it stopped too quickly. Okay, uh, let's put 4.2 there. Enjoy the programming, guys. I've been wasting your time for 20 minutes. I guess I'm going to put a 3.5 then. 3.5. Let's reinitialize. Go, planet, go, 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 go. Now it's too slow. Ah, 3.10. Mm. Oh, it stopped again. Almost stopped again. Now let's do it 20. I wanted to get there faster. I also wanted to stop. It's getting there. It overshot it. It overshot it by a whole lot. So this is not a solution. Eight, no, 17. Run the code. Okay, now let's switch the other one and now we should be going back. Which is not doing it. Oh, it's doing it, but it's doing it very slowly. Okay, so this, I'm gonna put it back 15 then. Because this was too fast. Then enough time to break. Okay, so we should get a loop. Nope. So 3.2 maybe then. I need to give it time to stop. I don't have a break instantly at certain time and ignore. Oh, that is so slow. Uh, an impulse of minus 5 inches overshoot, which I will overshoot quite probably. And give it a uh, love. Hold on. I keep pressing one before I reset it. Come on, seven seconds, six seconds, five, four, three, two, one. No, I keep overshooting it. So I might have to stop it sooner. Also, I have to give it a permission to stop. I'm not sure if I give it a permission to stop there, uh, but I'm going to have to put it... I'm not sure if it... how it gets them. If it gets them in order or not. Uh, ten... okay. Three. Maybe four. Okay. Reset and run. I can even close the code window, actually. See, so I have it in real time. On the big screen. I could just not slow it down and just start to plow into it at 120 like some animal. Let's see how this goes. Oh, that was just way too fast. Way, 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 way too fast. Okay, 50. That's a constant 50 and maybe it'll stop when it needs to. I'm gonna stop at 3.6. No, I would have helped like an indicator here for... Yeah, that didn't do... <laughs> that did not do what I uh, wanted to do. Try Spyton and go! Go, planet! Oh, 50 is goddamn slow. And then it's going too slowly. Okay, uh, put this at 5. And this at 100. Hey, at least it stopped sort of there. Go, go! Go, my mighty drone, go. Okay, engine cut off. Engine cut off, not what I wanted to do. Yeah, just gonna stop at 4 like I did in the beginning. Go acceleration. Come on, optional go. So close, so goddamn close. Ah, I'm so close. Anywho, there's probably some really quite simple way to get it to stop there at precisely three meters with the tools I have at my disposal. I'm probably gonna get it at some point. It's not gonna be in this show. Hey, if you're watching this, Post in the comments how I can do it. And I'll try to code, see if it works. Or hell, you try to code, post a video, and you show it working. It's, that, that's, what's, that's the point of this, this game. It's supposed to encourage you to finish things faster and better and more efficiently. Which <laughs> I did not do. I did not do. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna see you next time with uh, another demo from the Steam, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Fest... Watch him goggle it. Next fest, yeah, that's it. So uh, the Jira programming is going to be out next year. If you want to learn programming, or if you have kids that you want them to learn programming, yeah, this this looks like a really enjoyable game. It's a bit frustrating in some cases, but it's, it's enjoyable. I like it. Again, not as much as Colobot, because Colobot had you explore other plants, but in this one you can... You're gonna... You're, you're gonna use image processing to... 
drive missiles, which, again, is a very valid skill for today's political climate and job offerings. Goodbye, everybody. Take care.